say that Ralph would like to be here, but is unable to, so greetings from him to all of you. And I, th I thought long and hard about what I should talk about today, and I thought long and hard about what I should say today, and I knew there would be uh, Kawartha Land Trust uh, information and about the trails and so on. So I know a lot of you knew Norman, but a lot of you didn't. So I just wanted to speak personally and give you a little bit of, of an idea of what a, a unique and amazing man he was. Uh, we probably met, I think it was 1992. We moved up here just outside of Lakefield in 98 and uh, got to know Norman. He loved pumps. So I had a Dural <laughs> pump that was going to the dump and he wanted to pay me. I said, no way, just take it. And then we had pump problems later on and somehow around this idea, a fast friendship happened and he, uh, he said he lived a very dangerous life. He spent all day out on the trails. He was very habitual, um, graveling, graveling his trails and cutting wood. That's what he did almost every day except Tuesdays when he went to town. And uh, he said, I live a very dangerous life. I, I worry someday that they're just going to find me frozen to death on the trail. So I said, well, why don't I call you each night at 5.30? So Norman put into place a safety rescue kind of thing. So we talked every night, really, from 1998. We got to know each other very, very well. And he was a very dear friend. What I want you to know about him was that he was probably the most content human being I've ever known just relished every day. You could just feel his smile on the phone when he'd been out chopping wood. He'd often say, I'm not very interesting, but um, he was incredibly kind to know about his generosity. Truth was very, very important to Norman. Um, his integrity was huge. Uh, he loved nature, but he was certainly a very vocal and devoted atheist, but worshipped creation. Uh, he was a scientist scientist and did a lot of reading and that kind of thing, but he was he was truly a wonderful eccentric and I really enjoyed that part about him. Every morning in his microwave, which was the only place he cooked, uh, there was a big plate of, a big plate of broccoli and about five vegetables and salads and that was breakfast. He never drank tea, coffee, anything alcoholic, juice, skim milk and water was it, an apple at 10 o'clock every morning. Um, he had a wonderful, wonderful sense of humor, and we had a lot of laughs. And uh, just a very warm, kind, kind guy. Kindness was his religion, and he walked his talk. Um, he lived his own truth, and he, he lived a very, very happy life. And even at the end, when he developed ALS, uh, he was very grateful for his life, very content to leave it, and uh, there was just an enormous peace. So when you walk his trails, I hope you'll just think about this wonderful, eccentric, generous, kind man and take him on your walks with him as you walk through. He, he just loved this place. He never wanted to leave. He didn't want to spend a night anywhere else. He just, this was home and he knew where it was and I, I feel he was really blessed to know who he was and to have this just in infinite contentment.